Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I've got another Diablo update video for you today. So you'll remember in the last Diablo update, we applied steel it to the frame. Obviously that's going to be a oxidation resistance. It's gonna prevent any rust from forming. It really needed it before it was black and then it had some red overspray on it from the Lamborghini factory, which is normal and that's fine on a Diablo. But it also had silver overspray on it because it was stolen and repainted from red to silver. It was bad, not what we wanted. So it's stripped all the way back. We had it walnut blasted to completely get rid of all of any sort of paint that was on it. So it was the bare steel. It was really cool in that form. You could see just the rawness that is this frame. You can see it's just welded together, all these different little sticks. Like literally some dude in Italy was just over there at a metal bandsaw all day long, chopping little pieces to put together all these Diablo frames. You can see all the weld marks here. Some of them are good. Some of them are great. And then there's some that are slightly questionable. It's, it's all pretty good. I haven't seen any welds that were totally egregious, but what is really cool about it is it's all this, just like so much handwork. These days, they don't even do tube metal chassis. It's all carbon monocoques that are so like perfect. They do them in autoclaves. They do them in a mold. They're literally down to like the thousandth of a millimeter. Perfect. Not so much with this. So it's got all that old timey car character that you'd ever want in it. So it's cool. Obviously there's uh, benefits to doing carbon fiber and all that, but I like the old stuff too. Anyways, today we are moving right along with the project. We also off camera is not the most entertaining thing. So I didn't film it. We applied an etching primer to the whole inside here. So this is just black on black on black. Very similar process to what we did to the frame. We just needed to give this a really nice corrosion resistant base layer for everything. From here, we're going to put an actual black paint over it that will uh, just be a little bit smoother. It doesn't really show on camera, but this is not like the final finish that we want on it. From there, we're going to add heat shielding and sound deadening. It's kind of one and the same. Um, into all these little cutouts here and then just keep building on it layer by layer until we should be left with a finished interior once we do like upholstery and all of that. So this is coming right along. You're probably wondering what the engine is doing here, just dangling. You can see instead of a behemoth engine hoist that's capable of carrying this V12, we're just using our four, four post lift. So we're going to be putting this back into the engine Hey, now, sorry, I'm taking a long time to get to the point in this video. You guys have probably all stopped watching. But for those of you that have stuck around, we're actually getting into some of the literally like the coolest stuff I've ever done with any vehicle ever. That is all of the like the piping, the exhaust, the manifold, all of that needs to be mapped out and custom fabricated. So that's what we're getting into. This is like the really, really deep level stuff that you don't really see or do much anywhere. It's mostly, you know, typically there's kits for stuff. There's bolt ons there's equal length headers that you can just buy, but not really for Diablos, uh, especially not twin turbo setup Diablos. So that is what we're going for here. We're still not like 100% set in stone with everything, but that's exactly what we're trying to get figured out. So we're putting the engine back down into its place. And then we've got these uh, Lego kits here. We've got all the different uh, sizes for all the different uh, tubings that we'll be using because each different, you know, off the headers, you've got these small little tubes and then you keep progressively kind of going up in diameter with your tubing as all of the air gets funneled into fewer and fewer channels. Eventually by the end, your tailpipe is just going to have two exhaust exits and that's where your widest pipes are gonna be, I guess, at least in theory. Yeah, that's the rundown um, here in a sec. We're just gonna go ahead and start hoisting it down in. Let's go ahead and drop this down inside the bay and we'll get started with the uh, Lego stuff. All right, Hunter is dragging the Diablo by the jack. That's funny. This thing does not weigh a whole ton when it has no interior or engine or anything Go figure. We got room for days without the transmission on there. You want to go lower it? The lift? Oh, yeah. I can do the honors, huh? Two hands right, you oh, want to go lower fine. it? Huh? Because I need to. I could do it. I could do a two for one. I could hold this with my elbow and. Oh no, I can't. This okay. is like on Interstellar when they got to dock the. Oh, yeah. The spaceship. Start playing that good Hans Zimmer music. Yeah, here I'll start spinning the camera. Hold up. Go down. This needs like one more little jaunt. All right, right there. All right, keep going down. All right, Pat, you want to grab the, see that mouth? This guy? 
All right, chains are off. We're heading on up on a Tuesday. All right, the engine has been freed from its shackles. We've got everything in place here. What a sight to behold. Nothing like a good old fashioned V12. This is cool, supercar. We need to get the uh, Legos out over here and we need to route all the piping out. We got a lot of tubes for a lot of different purposes to fit in this little engine bay here. It should be, uh, as far as engine bays go, this is like a generously sized one, right? Yeah, yeah it's not horrible. I mean, when you're going up to two inch tubes and stuff, it's really tight. It'll be tight. Yeah, we have to fit the, uh, the manifold, the headers mm -hmm. on there. Those will go straight into the hot end of the turbo. Yep. Lead two. Down. Well, technically, I have an up pipe turbo here. Okay. And then you have your three inch exhaust or three inch exhaust valve back here, so there's plenty of room for that. Are we gonna do any to like intercoolers and stuff? We're gonna go air to water. Air to so, water intercoolers. So those are the like encapsulated ones. Yeah. So the stock manifold actually is a two piece, so it'll have its runners and it comes oh, up. Oh yeah. It, it separates right here, so that we can just add the cores and utilize the stock and everything. So it's actually really yeah. Not Sweet. Yeah, so this is, yeah, like this is gonna be the challenge. Um, but let's go ahead and get the stuff out so we can get some visuals going on. This is a lot of explaining and not a lot of visualizing. Okay, well, we're going home right now and we're coming back tomorrow. All right, it's tomorrow. We've got our sets out here. Let me walk you through them a little bit. All right, so we've got three sets of these and they're what, like $1,000 a piece, 1,500 or something? Yeah, something like that. So yeah. expensive that it makes you wanna cry. Three sets of them. You're looking at like $4,500 of Legos. RIP my wallet. Anyways, this is the good stuff. This is what we want. So um, this is what makes mapping out your tubing, your exhaust, your manifolds, your headers really easy. So like this, this shows you, you know, like you get the pieces. Each one of these pieces is a different angle. Is that how the bags are separated? Uh, so you're, so you're, you're a, oh frick, your CLR. I just said it, what does that mean? Your central line. line radius, I think. Central line radius. <clears throat> so that's the the difference. See how it's so. Okay, it's, so that's a really tight corner. That's wider and even wider. Yeah, so you have an eight inch, six inch, and a. Okay, so that is the difference between a lot of the pieces. Mm -hmm. Some of them are just straight, right? Uh, this one's curved. Yep. So that would be a more shallow, probably your four inch. Four inch. Okay, so this is the oh, yeah, bag right with the four on it. So this is the really slow curve and then a more aggressive curve. So here's your straight ones. Here's and a straight one. Just looks like a Lego character's head. Is that a tighter radius? It's a tighter, yep. Yeah, so I mean, when you when you get all the right tools and equipment for it, it like, they make it easy these days, relatively easy. It's still gonna be a whole lot of work. Um, but yeah, we've already got, where's the first piece you had? So this just goes, does it work on this side? Or is it, uh, yeah, does it yeah, need to be exactly. mirrored? Okay, so you've already kind of roughly, I guess this isn't final, but in theory, that meets up right here. And then we'll join the rest. So we're gonna need to do six of these per side. And uh, with headers, if you want them to sound good and work good, you want them to be equal length. Is that just a sound thing or is it a performance thing? It's definitely a performance thing. Your okay. uh, back pressures are the same all the way through. Maybe gotcha. Uh, and it makes the sound just like clean, clean, clean. When you've got a, especially a V12, oh yeah, yeah, sounds real good. So that's what we gotta do. So look at this, the headers here. If you're starting here and you need to go here, that's a lot of distance. But if you're starting here and you need to go here, that's not a lot of distance. So instead of going straight in a straight line, you have to take a real long path in order to equal everything out. So it's kind of unnecessary. It takes up more space, but it gives you better performance and better sound. So yeah, that's what uh, the whole theory behind equal length headers is all about. So yeah, we need to do six of these per cylinder. So we'll go ahead and kind of get started on that process. We're not gonna get it done today, but I'll show you what we do get finished. These will couple up into a collector, I believe it's called, which will then go to a, a larger singular tube. And then from there, it goes straight into the hot end of the turbo. So we're gonna be making a, not a down pipe, but sort of an up pipe because it's uh, so down low. It come up anyways. And then the rest of the piping for the cold side of the turbo and all of that, that's a whole other thing. But we're just getting started on the headers today. So that's what we're gonna focus on. I had an up pipe. Oh, there we go. So all of these will collect. Is this the longest one? Uh, if it, yeah, it's gonna be way longer than that though. Okay, okay. So this is part of the longest one. Mm -hmm. It'll go into a big collector. And they'll all meet up in that collector. 
They'll all go into that, which will then go into the turbo. Here, we got one right over here. Meets up into the hot end of the turbo, and then you uh, go out and down, and yeah, that's your exhaust. And then you've got the cold side of the turbo, your air intake side, so you, the air coming in. So we're gonna have to do, you know, all of this same piping that you see here, we're gonna have to repeat over there. So I guess this right here, since we need to make custom flanges, and I haven't kind of decided if you wanna split it into two separate ones or run one long one, but this would go into said flange and then this so the flange bolts up to the engine block yep so you put so you put the yeah so the flange will bolt to the engine block these you bolt to the flange okay and uh that's how they so these came with the kit yeah okay so yeah well i'm just going to kind of show you the process we're not gonna get it exact and perfect today. This is gonna take so much little tweaking and fine tuning, um, but he's getting kind of the rough idea down. You can see it really is like literally just like Legos. See, so this is nice because this kind of would fit outside of the car, but now you get it in here and you know. Okay, so you know that it's not gonna hit the frame there. So you're gonna have an issue here if oh, you were we... to actually do this. Oh, that is bad. Yeah, that's bad. Oh, okay. Pull that off, remove some length. Go back on. This is so cool. I hope you guys watching this are appreciating this. I have never seen or experienced anything like this. This is like the extreme side of fabricating. There's a couple things we need to decide, like if we want it this close to here, but I mean. Yeah, how close should it be or can it be? We don't want stock, it to rattle all, and touch, right? This is all heat shielding. Okay. That's here too. So there's gotta be extra space there too. So we probably wanna make sure we get way more clearance out of this. Okay. So we can even tilt it down if we need to with another little angle up here. Then like you get one of them and then you gotta remember you have five more to go, so. Okay, like, so yeah, we need to cram six of these pipes in here. Then we get to kind of pick our style too. So this is actually kind of a real how, So like how loopy you want it, so if you, you want, want it to like. Nice and curvy like the other one you showed uh -huh. on the phone or like this where it's kind of like tight angle and you have like three, see. like, you know. Yeah. But then if it, you know, make sure it's equal length this is the most important. So it does let you play with your aesthetic and also performance, which is freaking sick. Which is exactly what we need that's that good. in the Hot Boy V12 Lambo. No, yeah, Hot Boy stuff all day long. That huh. looks freaking good already. And we kind of just yeah, threw it together. I'm liking that. Yeah, that is literally just like, man, this is going to be so much easier than we thought. This is going to be a walk in the park. Uh, and if I need to make more room, I can always come out here too because it does give us room up. And okay. That can drop underneath this one. I know there's like, it's like an eight inch square. From like here to there. Uh huh. And if these are two inches at six, you have 12 inches, but I think there's easily enough space. And okay. we also go here if we have to. Okay. Who knew twin turboing a Diablo from scratch would be so easy? Theoretic, the, the, uh, the technic. We're going to get this done next week and we're going to be like, wow, we need three why doesn't everyone do this? Okay, I think I'm going to cut the video here. Um, I would like to get, I mean, we got to do all 12 of these. So we're going to do that sooner than later. Um, but right now we're not taking the time to do it properly. So if I were to do it for camera, we would just have to redo it again later. So sorry, you guys don't get to see all of it right now, but I'll uh, update you guys as soon as it's ready. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you are thinking of this build and the, I guess the film style of it. I'm kind of a little bit all over the place with how I've been doing it. Um, but lately I like just kind of being as candid as I can and as kind of raw with the filming as possible. I know it's a little bit more slower paced, but hopefully uh, the, the hardcore lads out there appreciate that good, thorough, just like genuine build stuff. So yeah, anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, Hive Garage, it's a pleasure. Appreciate you all. Catch you in the next one. Smell you later, stinky.